So, um, my name is Virginie Papadopoulou and I am a researcher currently working at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Um, and I'm part of the Department of Biomedical Engineering. So um, we're doing research using mathematical, physical tools, but investigating things related to medicine or biology. And so currently I am looking at um, new research in ultrasound for um, detecting and treating cancer. And previously I've worked a lot on um, decompression sickness for scuba divers, especially how bubbles form in the body and how we can detect them after the dive. So I think the main finding that was surprising to me when I started my research is that people that follow all of the current um, guidelines in diving and all of the safety recommendations can still get decompression sickness. And so this means that no one is completely safe, although you can minimize your risk. So what we're trying to do in terms of research is understand why there are differences between people in how they respond to the same exposure and what factors um, will influence how likely you are to get decompression sickness and then what we can do to prevent that more on an individual basis. So personalize decompression algorithms to specific individual physiology, tailor it. So that's a great question. Um, I think when I started my research um, I thought that this was going to be relatively simple, that in a few years we could take all of this information and put it into an algorithm. And as I progressed, I realized that a lot of these factors, we, we are starting to understand them, but we, we're still a few years or decades away from turning it into an algorithm. But even though, even if we can't really turn it into an actual algorithm, a lot of the findings that we're publishing are completely relevant and are useful guidelines. And then hopefully, in my view, at some point, we'll be able to have a decompression algorithm on your dive watch that will give you a different recommendation from your dive buddy who has a different physiology. Um, so I think that's a great question. So obviously I'm looking at how bubbles form and how they can cause decompression sickness, but the more we understand about the bubble behavior, then the more we know what will affect dissolution and how the body can react to it. So yes, it will affect treatment to some extent. So if we know, for example, that by giving a specific um, medication or by recompressing with such table, we have a better chance of recovery, then I think that is still relevant um, to, to the actual treatment. So I think the key point I'd like people to understand when they're diving is that all of the research that we are doing on diving can actually impact how we treat and understand other completely unrelated diseases, like how we would diagnose or treat atherosclerosis or cancer. So the fact that we're doing research specifically in scuba diving means that we're looking at um, understanding how the body reacts to an external stressor, that of going diving. And if we understand how the body behaves under stress, that means that we can understand what happens in pathophysiology in general. So in other stressors that, for example, would include cancer or atherosclerosis or any other um, disease. And at the same time, in other medical fields, we have new tools and new technologies that we use, and this can benefit the diving research when we bring these methods back into the diving research. So to give just one example, we have um, new ultrasound imaging techniques that allow us to be more sensitive to small bubbles and this could have implications for um, human diving too. So the future interest that we're currently pursuing is having um, a method of detecting the bubbles after the dive that is more sensitive and that is more continuous. So we want to make sure that we have a way of capturing all of the dynamics of how things change after the dive. So having a continuous measurement is helpful because we can see not only what the value is at a specific time point, but how it evolves after the dive. And then we can correlate it with other parameters or other individual factors. And in terms of sensitivity, we're trying to bring the size of the bubbles into the equation. So instead of just saying, I have a lot of bubbles, we'll be able to say we have this many small bubbles and this many big bubbles. And trying to see if the size um, helps us understand some of the variability that we've observed between people after the same dive exposure.